All right, today we're talking with Andrew Valdez Johnston, who's still on active duty with the Navy. Andrew, you got you're doing some great things um, with real estate and real estate investment investing, um, especially while you're still on active duty. Looking forward to hearing about all about that. But you've been in the Navy about six eight years now, so tell us what you've been doing so far. Yeah, so I, I I've been in the Navy for about eight years. Uh, I'm transitioning out this year. Uh, on good faith, you know, uh, just better opportunities happened. And so I'm just going to pursue those. So basically, you know, we went to boot camp, Great Lakes, and um, I experienced the third coldest winter in Chicago. So for all my uh, buddies that were there in 2013, you know how bad that sucked. You know, it was so cold that the CO authorized us to put our hands in our pocket, <laughs> you know. And so uh, during that time, also, we had this. Um, this big government shutdown. So I was in great legs for way longer than I needed to. Um, but it kind of lit a fire because since I wasn't doing anything, I had learned that if I score top grad in, uh, my engineering classes and my a school, which is, you know, my technical training, right. Schools for my M for my rate, that'll automatically advance me to E4. So I came in as an E1 top grad to E4 got to my ship, uh, I made E6 around four and a half years, and then now I'm still serving here in uh, at, in Norfolk at the Naval Base. Wow. Like E6 in four and a half years is kind of unheard of, isn't it? You know, um, more recently, it's becoming more and more regular. Really? To be, to be honest with you. Yeah. And honestly, the people that really like um, motivated me were my a school teachers because i'm like if this guy can be e6 in five years i can be e6 <laughs> in five years right. so however you want to take that right if he can do it i definitely can do it wow that's awesome well, it's good you had that that guidance and mentorship um to you know dangle that carrot out there in front of you and it's awesome that you that you, you went for it and you've had that rapid acceleration with promotion in in only six years so that's awesome so Talk a little bit about where this whole entrepreneurship bug came from. You know, I've always kind of been an entrepreneur, but it's not that it was intentional. It's been very unintentional. It's just like a bunch of life events has just led me and prepped me for entrepreneurship. Uh, for example, I lived in five different states, you know, so I've had five different realms of experience with different people you know i started a, a multi-level marketing business in high school um yeah. and stuff like that but what? that was a flop by <laughs> by this the way was uh, this one was verve so this was like in 2013 this was like a, an energy drink and it late i later learned that it was a ponzi scheme <laughs> right but <laughs> nonetheless they had it was it really like uh, built a, a foundation for me to start thinking that way, where it's like, okay, I need to learn my product. I need to know who wants, who wants to use it, mm -hmm. right? All these unintentional things that I was just looking for. In addition to my dad, uh, my dad just started making me read, meaning he was like, you know what? You're not doing very good in schools, but you do need to learn how to like be, um, what does it say? Uh, making it a habit. And yeah. so really the first book that I kind of picked up was uh, why, why A Students Work for C Students by Robert Kiyosaki, yeah. right? And, and so it's uh, kind of funny, right? And, and, B, <laughs> and B Students Work for the Government, right? That's the other yep, half. And, of the title. Yep, and B <laughs> Students Work for the Government. I love that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki was a, a Marine Huey pilot in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. So it talks I kind of, I kind of, I kind of take, I think I kind of take the similar path that he did, mm -hmm. right? He's like, I wanted to go to the military because out of high school, I didn't know what I wanted. I wasn't, um, I wasn't very good in high school and nor was I disciplined, nor mm -hmm. did I have job training, right, of any experience at all. And I think a lot of us, what we can share is, is that when you're in the military, you experience so much. You experience at least 20 years worth of experience in a dense time of five years, because whether you're 
E4, then you move to E5 and you move to E6, right? Those are all different levels of leadership, different levels of things that you're learning, different stress stressors, right? And if you can condense that down in five years, for, for, for me, I feel like I'm an old man at this point, right? Where I just learn yeah. so much. You know, that's interesting. I, like, have you been listening to my podcast a lot? Because I've said that many times on my podcast. I'm like, the only way I can explain it to people is like, you, in the military, you pack so much living and life and experience into a short amount of time. It's like five years. It's like a five to one ratio for one year in the military. You've lived five years of what somebody maybe in the civilian sector. Yeah. Experience. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us talk to it am amongst each other just because like we work right next to civilians. Right. And uh, or at least where I'm at now, I work next to civilians and I can see the difference of, uh, of leadership that they know how to do, because, you know, you have not, I'm not trying to be ageist. Right. Mm -hmm. If you could call it, but a 35 year old man. Right. Still in my head, working as like an E4, E5 type deal. And they haven't made that transition into a, a manager role. And mm -hmm. so they've been that worker bee for years and years and years. Whereas in the military, yes, you're the worker bee. Yes, you get some grunt, like work and all that stuff. But eventually you do become that leadership, but it happens quick if you so do choose to. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to take responsibility for a program or something, they'll give it to you, right? And you mm -hmm. gain all that experience. And oftentimes in the military, you're thrust into leadership positions and you weren't even expecting it. You weren't even asking for it. And sometimes you don't even want it. But yeah you're forced on it and you you either have to you know swim or sink. yeah for <laughs> for all my for all my ramage friends uh that are listening right when i first got there uh, on ramage uh uss ramage ddg 61 um i got there we had an e5 that wasn't doing so hot and i was an e4 at the time and my chief threw me in to be the work center supervisor as an E4, right? And I was having such a hard time because I was like, okay, well, if I'm in charge, you should be listening to me, whether you're an E5 or whatever your rank is, but it never was the case, right? And so I always, I always had to learn how it wasn't about you being in charge, but it was really about your soft communication skills. How do I get this person to want to do this? You know, you always have to dance around these little things, but like basically just to say, I started learning these leadership skills when I was 19 years old, right. you know, 20 years old. There's not that many individuals that can do that, right? We're saying that you're managing 28 years old, 28 year olds or, you know, for people that don't want to take the responsibility. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and, then, and then it just grows from there. Um, have you, have you had like any compound those? interest? Yeah, it's like absolutely. compound interest, yeah, honestly. It's, it's like yeah. compound interest. It's like exponential. Um, have you had that have you had that experience of going back home and seeing some of the friends you've, you know, after four or five years in the Navy or however long, have you gone back home and hung out with some of the friends you grew up with that are still there doing the same thing? Um, since I'm gonna share this on my Facebook, I'm gonna say, Hey, I love you. <laughs> And I really enjoyed everything that we had together in high school. And it really built me to where I am. But I, I just had to grow. I had to grow and go do my own thing and flourish. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I did, you know, to answer your question, yes. But that's exactly why I left. Yeah. You know, because I didn't want to be in the same thing. I didn't want to be circling around, circling around doing with the same people. You know, I mm -hmm. wanted to grow. Well, all those experiences, I, like I would equate it to, you know, when I left high school or college, I was here with everybody. And I, when I would go home, I felt like I was like way up here and everybody else was still around the same spot that they were when I left. It was really not much in the, in the way of change whatsoever, but well, that's what the military I, experience does. You know, I, I definitely do agree though. I, I would not change the way that I live my life. Meaning like I would not change uh, joining the Na Navy when I was 17, right? Getting my parents' permission mm -hmm. to join when I was 17 and et cetera, et cetera, right? I would not change that because I wasn't ready for anything. So if you're not a veteran, you know, and you don't know what you're going to do after high school and you're listening, 
I would really suggest looking into going into the military, at least just for four years, you gain so much, so much. And by the time you're out, what are you like 22, 23, right? And you have the job experience, you get all the benefits, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I started my investing because of my VA loan. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. All right. We'll hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, back talking with Andrew Valdez Johnston, um, currently active duty Navy. So, Andrew, your main forte as far as entrepreneurship is in is in the real estate business. You're you're actually a real estate agent, but you started off investing in real estate as a as a investor before you became a real estate agent. Only here recently. So, can you tell us about what your first experience was or that first brush with real entrepreneurship? My first real rush was realizing how important personal financial literacy was. So I was really big into bigger pockets and there's a, a key word that they always throw around is house hacking, mm -hmm. right? So my first little endeavor was house hacking. And what really inspired me to do this is when I was an E4, I was bunking with an E5, right? And he was charging me 200 bucks a, a month worth of rent. Right. And I wish I had 200 bucks of rent now. But then when I was in E4, you know, I was like, man, I just feel like I'm literally throwing this money in the trash and it's going towards nothing. It's besides me living in this this place. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I learned about house hacking and I bought my first duplex. And so I house hacked this duplex and then later to learn that uh, our ship was getting um moved down to Mississippi for a yard period. Mm -hmm. And so at that point I learned, well, one, I learned how to go find these duplexes, right? How to run the numbers for them. And I had a great uh, agent at the time. Her name was uh, Kathleen Murray, which, which is actually the same brokerage that I work with now, mm -hmm. Hewlett Associates, Virginia Beach, right across the street from Lynn Haven Mall for all you Virginia Beach people, <laughs> right? And uh <laughs> and she actually worked with um, Robert Kiyosaki earlier in her days. She was a retired commander. And so her and I had a really good relationship because I was all about rich dad education. I was about all about financial literacy. And so I found the duplex. I made the offer. Uh, I just learned everything in it. So when I first got there, I took over my, my tenant stopped paying rent. Cool. And then after I finally got him out, I learned that we had a whole bunch of water damage in that unit that I thought got covered. Mm. Right. And I, at that time I was also leave leaving to go to Mississippi. Yeah. So I had all these issues, right. All these stressors, right. Which are also known as opportunities. Right. And so I took these stressors, made them into opportunities. I bought a whole bunch of tools. I learned everything about the law for, the landlord and tenant uh, law act. I learned about that. I'm not going to do that again, that I'm not going to inherit tenants. You know, I learned so much into there, which eventually led me to buy a fourplex, which eventually led me to invest into a, a dental practice. Wow. Can you, so I've heard of bigger pockets, but I can't think, I can't remember what it is exactly. Is that like a, it's, I would say it's the world's largest real estate forum. Uh, okay. And then, so yeah. exactly what is house hacking? Okay. So house hacking, house hacking is when you buy a, uh, a multifamily home in my case. And if you're dealing with the VA loan, you buy a duplex, a triplex or a fourplex, mm -hmm. and you intend to live in one of them. So while everyone else, all other in my case was a duplex. So the whole goal was to reduce my um, living expenses because right. the stats say that the normal average person spends about 30% of their income on their, uh, their housing. Right. And I was like, there's no way, how am I going to invest? How am I going to save my money? How am I going to do any of these things 
if I'm dumping all this money into my housing, right? And so how do I do that? Well, I buy a duplex, I rent the other side and it basically offsets my mortgage, right? So now I get a, I get to keep all my BAH, right? At the same time, I'm continuously learning how to be a landlord, continuous learning how to invest, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, like my nephew's done something similar. He, right out of college, he bought a house and he has roommates. All his roommates pretty much pay for the mortgage on the house. Um, but buying a duplex or quadplex or something like that, even better because all these other people are still paying your mortgage for you, but you don't really necessarily end up with roommates. Exactly. There's exactly. A, and then it, what's, what's even better than breaking even is cash flowing. <laughs> right. What, what's better than break than saving your your uh, your living expense is actually profiting off your living expense. And this, I do suggest this to people who just make E5 that are looking to get a house. You got to make the decision. You got to look into it. Just buying your if you're not married, you don't have a family that you're not worried about and you're single. And even if you are married, really, really think about house hacking. Right. Whether it's taking on one roommate or even making that jump of becoming a landlord in a duplex and triplex, because you're going to offset your living expenses so much that you're going to be able to save and invest in things that are going to cash flow greater because you have to get your personal finances in check before you become an entrepreneur, before you become an investor of any sort. You have to get yourself checked. Yeah. And. And the VA using your VA loan, I mean, if, if you're young and you don't know the benefits of the VA loan, I mean, it's pretty much a, it's one, it's pretty much no, no money down, um, no closing cost type of a transaction when you buy a piece of property. Um, yeah. I'll, so I'll, I, I, I haven't actually heard of this. It makes total sense, but if you buy a duplex or, or, or a tri or quadplex, as long as you're living in one of them, the VA is okay with you buying the whole place with your VA loan. Yes. So awesome. and this goes back, this goes back to definitions, right? So a residential prop, a VA loan is only good for residential property mm -hmm. and it's only used for primary residents. Right. So if we go back to definition, the definition of a residential property is four units and below. Mm. So anything after five units is commercial. So okay. technically if you if you intend to live in one of one of the units of the four units, say you buy a fourplex, the VA loan is going to fund that. Uh, you can you can enroll your uh, your um, what's it called um, your funding fee, like you can roll that into your your loan, but you mm -hmm. can't roll your closing costs. Mm -hmm. So you do have to pay for your closing costs, but you you know there's other ways you can do it. You can get some help from the seller or maybe. Yeah even your agent can throw in a couple dimes to help you with closing costs. Yeah. That's kind of a recent change with, with the VA loan. I think years ago you could pretty much roll it all in there. It was, they call it, called it the VA. No, no, nobody down, no closing costs at all. They just walk. You, you have a new house just by signing, signing the document. So, uh, but on a place like that, I mean, closing costs pretty, most of the time aren't going to be that significant anyways, but, um, and like you said, there are other, other ways of, making the, making the deal with the seller and all that to, to right. right. You can get, you can get lender credits and stuff like that. And yeah. it's a little bit more in depth. It's more loan officer stuff. Um, but. So that was, that was at the beginning. So tell us how you progressed in some of the other uh, real estate ventures you've gotten involved in. I think you said you had a dental office that's uh, actually active right now. Yes. Yeah, so um my family right now, so my girlfriend and I, we've been together about four years and uh, we have, we opened one in Williamsburg um, and then now we're rehab, well, I'm rehabbing one in Norfolk. And so she's running that by herself and we have an associate up there, but we're eventually going to move her down here to Norfolk. So with that being said, shout out to all military families because we're going to be one of the only uh, dental private dental practices that can accept Tricare, and um, in our Norfolk office, we're also um, 
an expert in cosmetic dentistry. Really? So, so, so you, she's a dent. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to ask like, so you don't just own, you just don't own, own or manage the property. You're, you're actively involved with the dentist. Both. Themselves yes. and- Both. Right. Yep. So I have an entity that controls uh, the building, an entity that controls the business. Right. And so. So you just go out and find a dentist and plug the dentist into the, into your system. And as long as they're in agreement with taking TRICARE yes. and everything else. Yes. And so, yeah, it's TRICARE, Medicaid, private uh, insurances and stuff like that. And it is, it make it kind of, sounds a little bit easy but once you get the it's it's a little hard because even now like the labor the labor shortage actually affects that you you would think that people at least doctors would would want to to work but it's actually sometimes it's a little bit hard right because they've been we've been used to living uh, on the couch for a year uh teledentistry you know, like tele dentistry where we're having a zoom call, like we are now. And you're like looking at my teeth and you're just describing your, uh, your issues that you're having, you know? And then it's like, Oh, is it really worth it for you to come in the office? And it's like, so many people got used to that. And at one point we were only able to see people with emergencies, mm. you know? So it's, it's mm. a little, it was a little hard there, but now we're starting to get to a somewhat of a normalized thing. And um, we got a good deal. Well, I found us a good deal for this Norfolk office. And so I'm happy about it. Wow. You've come a long ways, uh, you know, and, and still be in active duty for a little bit longer. Um, so you say you are looking to get out of the Navy here in the near future, um, you know, leave on good terms and equitable and all that. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you the question anyways. When you get out of the Navy, are you going to go out and get a J-O-B? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get a, a J-O-B, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think uh, I'm going to go to a trade school. Really? I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to a trade school and learn a little bit uh, carpentry and uh, electric. That's what I'm going to do. But that doesn't make me, I'm going to go get a J-O-B uh, just because... Um, I don't think I consider myself really unemployable, but if you follow rich dad education and you follow what Robert Kiyosaki says, Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't, you, have you ever heard of the EBSI, the cash flow quadrant? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. In there, in there, it talks about basically the rate of tax that individuals get. Uh, So everyone just write down a, a T and on the top left, write an E at the bottom, left, write an S at the top right, write a B at the bottom uh, right, you write an I. The E stands for employee, the S stands for uh, specialist, and the B stands for business owner, and the I stands for investor. So the employee is military personnel, anyone that has a W-2, um, and the specialist is more of like a, a doctor, attorney, uh, individuals like that. And a business owner, it would be more of someone that owns a business that doesn't require them to be in there. That's the key factor, right? right? That's what separates you from a self-employed and a business owner is does your business require you to be in it? Can you go leave for a week and your business still be running, right? That's going to separate you. And then the investor, uh, which is basically someone that, um, lives off their cash flow and dividends and stuff like that. They all have different tax rates. Mm -hmm. So don't quote me here, but essentially the employee gets taxed at 30%. The self-employed doctor individual who gets paid more is get taxed at 40%. Business owners get paid at 10 or sorry, 20% and then investors at 10%, right? So I follow the, it's called the the BI triangle, right? Where that helps set me up because I care about my family's long-term financial health so much that it's actually a dishonor to my family to, to get a, a job. I should be pursuing entrepreneurship. I should be trying to learn how to do all these things, right? Because it's my duty to my family and my kids' kids to learn these skills, teach it to them, right? And have a, a decent legacy to uh, hand off. 
Yeah. Um, you definitely have a, a lot of awareness of, uh, personal, you know, personal financial education. Would, would you credit Robert Kiyosaki in his books? But like, is that, is that really where it all started with you? Was that one of the first books that you read that triggered all this? Because, because I, I remember my first year in the Marine Corps a long time ago, somebody handed me a Charles J. Gibbons book. You probably never even heard of the guy. Uh, it was called Wealth Without Risk. It was the first book I'd ever read that talked to me personally about how I needed to make sure to become aware of how insurance worked and how mortgages worked and how taxes worked. Very similar to what Robert Kiyosaki stuff is today. And I do love all the Robert Kiyosaki stuff. I still listen to his podcast. Do you remember what the first couple of things were that triggered you with all this? I mean, I have, I have many mentors that I may not know, but I look as, at them as mentors and they're, they all have, you have to take all these gurus that you would say with a grain of salt. Cause for instance, um, some people aren't ready for Robert Kiyosaki. I'm going to mm -hmm. say that you, you need more of a Dave Ramsey, mm -hmm. you know, because I would say this, if how Dave Ramsey is for people that are not educated financially. So yes, you need to follow Dave Ramsey. If you don't know how to invest, because then you are putting yourself too much at risk, right? So yes, live debt free if you don't know how to play with debt. But once you become financially literate, then you graduate from David Ramsey and you go on to Robert Kiyosaki, right? And yeah. Robert is all about debt. You need to take on debt in order to become financially successful because you have assets that are paying off this debt and you are, um, you are basically um, being awarded by the cash flow that it presents, right? And so it's, it's kind of a, a mixture with all of those things. There's not necessarily one thing that he said, but in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he did really talk to me personally, I felt like, um, on a financial literacy standpoint. And I'm going to bring out another big name, uh, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone says, it's your duty to be successful. Right. It's your duty to be successful, right? To yourself, to your family, and the people around you that rely on you, right? It's your duty. So if it's your duty, if you take, if you take like, we're in the military, right? Or if you take your duties very seriously, you should be taking your, per your personal finances as serious as you take the armed forces, right? Because at the end of the day, who do you go home to? your family. You can't drop your ball. You can't drop the ball on your family by living paycheck to paycheck or not trying to learn more about entrepreneurship or learn about how to save money and invest it, right? Because then you're not really doing, you're not doing anyone a service, you know? And so that's how I personally feel about it. And I kind of have like a, I know a little passion about it just because it's, and it's just the way it is. This is who, who I've grown out to be. Yeah, man. You really didn't grow up with any of this, did you? No, no. Like, and that's, 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 that's like what, how I said earlier. It's just I unintentionally, because of life events, kind of help lead me to here. You know, and so like I, I told you, I lived in five different states and I wasn't a military brat. It's just the way that things were. And it's just the opportunities that are afforded. It's not it's not the circumstances that really makes you, you know, it's what you do with those circumstances, you know? So I've lived in Texas, South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Washington, Virginia, right? And all these things, I've met all different types of people. I have friends in all these different areas. So for my friends in South Dakota, Shelly Day, you can go see her in Dallas, South Dakota, or you can go bowl in Gregory, South Dakota. And many of you don't know what I'm talking about. But that's okay because I have connections over there, right? And me living how I grew up kind of helped me do some of that stuff, right? And it, I just kind of fell into it. And just my life is just, I knew that I lived very poor. I lived very rich growing up. I saw both sides and I'd rather have money than no money. 
right? And it's just the way it is. I, I'd rather have money and then like work on myself personally, right? right? Versus working on myself personally and still be poor. And maybe those are two extremes, but at the end of the day, I'm always striving to become a little bit more financially well because I'd rather live that way than be stressed out about where our next meal is. You know, I, I kind of, that's kind of how I, I just live it. I live it a little bit more extreme. Yeah. All right. We are getting close to the end of our time here, Andrew. Um, I do want to give you a chance for a shout out. Um, if, if some, you are actually a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area, um, if somebody's moving there and they want to get in touch with you for that, how would they go about doing that? Yeah. So I have a, my website, it's vjr.realestate. Um, my brokerage is Hewlett and Associates mm -hmm. uh, Realty. We are out in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. And yeah, that's where you can find me. Um, I'm going to give Joe uh, some notes that he can put down with phone numbers, emails and stuff if you guys want to get more into it. But if you don't mind, I kind of want to uh, talk about something that I didn't bring up with you prior. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, um, let's see. So since this audience is mainly veterans, right, I just want to propose a goal that we can all easily accomplish, you know, mm -hmm. with the, the most impact, the shortest amount of time, you know, um, just call or FaceTime at least one person you served with that you haven't spoken to in a while. And just let's make checking up on each other a normal thing. Because personally for me, I've been in for eight years and every year I, I know eight people that I served with, laughed with, fought with, lost their lives to like suicide, drug abuse and gun violence. So I'm not asking you to change the world or do a million push-ups to raise awareness or even say anything that you did anything. I'm just saying, just call that one person that you haven't talked to in a while, right? Just to say how they're doing, because you, you never know how anyone else is doing. And I know we get caught up in a lot of stuff. And yeah, so if we can do that, I think uh, we can help each other out in the long run. It's great. Awesome. We'll, we'll do it. I'll call I'll think of somebody to call today as soon as we're done. All right. Last thing. Appreciate that. You bet. All right. You get the last word. If you're talking to somebody like yourself, who's still in the military, but they're getting close to transitioning out, maybe somebody's already farther along in their transition, looking at, looking to get into entrepreneurship, trying to decide what to do when they get out. What kind of advice would you have for them? I would say one, it's going to suck but you got to learn to want to read. You have to learn how to want to read. And if not that, I'm going to leave you with a, a little quote from a, a personal favorite uh, mentor. His name's Jim Rohn. So if you don't know who he is, yeah. that's another tasking. Go talk to Jim Rohn. <laughs> uh, he says, you can have more than you got because you can become more than you are. But on the flip side, unless you change who you are, you'll always have what you got. So you have to be willing to change in order to go ahead and move on in life. So please do that. Pick up a book. Uh, when I was, sorry, uh, going a little long, but pick up a book. When I went on deployment, I didn't bring my PS3. I didn't bring my phone to play games on. I literally brought books with me to teach me on financial literacy financial literacy, financial literacy, please. That's what you have to do. And don't go buy a brand new truck because that's how you get stuck. If you truly want to be an entrepreneur, don't go buy that 2019 just because you made E5, right? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to have the 2010 truck. You don't need that big of, of a payment. You need to control your expenses, which in, in turns turns into financial literacy. That's awesome. Well, hey, Andrew, um, you shared some, some great golden nuggets and uh, shared some of your personal success stories. It's awesome to see somebody, especially at your age, who's got this kind of awareness towards uh, not only personal finance, but investing and wealth building. So keep up the good work and uh, we look forward to seeing your future success and good luck on your transition out of the Navy. I appreciate it a lot, Joe. Thanks for having me. All right. We are Oscar Mike. Oof.